Brian is a, a not a traditional version. Our traditional version that we're used to seeing is blue, white, red. Brian does have access to those red cards in his sideboard, and along with a uh, two copies of Volcanic Island in his main. I'm sure that uh, Yim, I wouldn't be surprised yet. Yeah, he does have the mountain in his deck, so uh, I would classify Yim's version. At, you know, it, we're, we're splitting hairs at this point because both players will have blast after sideboard. One thing that Brian Brown Duin has is the at post board he has the ability to board into a full play set of Stoneforge Mystics. And if you need to win games and win them quickly, I think he has to board in that package, regardless of whether he likes it in the matchup. That said, I mean, I don't even think it's bad in the matchup, to be honest. Well, nor do but, I. Uh, he needs to aggressively go for that. We may even see him play cards like Meddling Mage just to try to get in there quickly. He's going to need to get fast wins. So Yim is going to take a mulligan here. See what he can put together on a six card hand again. Tick tock does go that clock. Yeah, and things continue to get harder for BBD to, to be able to get this. Let's see if Yim can find a hand he likes. He does, and Brian is going to play real fast because he doesn't have much of a choice. And you know, one thing about situations like this, and you've played competitive magic for a while, you know, Yim is going to play at a reasonable pace. It's not like he's going to play slow, but he doesn't have to play at this lightning speed pace that Brian has to play at. A lot of players feel like, oh, he should play as fast as Brian is to give an opportunity to win. It's like all his all his job is to do is play to reasonable place. Don't slow play, but he doesn't have to go. I'll land on this. I'll land on this. No, he he doesn't have to do that. He can certainly take time to think through his decisions. Game one just took a while. So if this goes to a draw, and this will be here, here's some drama we can set up. Say this goes to a draw. Brian okay. misses top eight. What will happen is two players. The top eight spot will be then between Chi Hoi Yim and Reed Duke, who both have the same number of points and entered this round with almost identical tiebreakers. Oh, well, well. So we would have we'd have quite the drama if Brian manages to draw this one up. We certainly will. Both players going to spin their tops here. Yim going to draw a card and play a Plains for the turn. He will pass the turn back over to Brunduin, who's going to sacrifice a Flooded Strand, quickly search his deck for a land as he does go down to 19. He's going to get a Plains. He'll present. I imagine a Vendillion click. Absolutely. Let's see if Yim wants to fight over this. He says, how about a Vendillion click of my own, if you don't mind? May I take a look? <laughs> All right, so Yim's going to get the first look then. Assuming he does want to target Brian, of course, and he does. You're going to see a Counterspell, a Sword of Feast and Famine, another sense he's dividing top. And the last card is a Jace the Mind Sculptor. Pretty good hand here for Brian. Yim's going to take a look at his hand, decide what he does want to do, as we are only 10 minutes in this match. Yeah, Brian just trying to tie it up, most likely. We will see. Both play A lot of trading going on. It does seem like in this matchup, traditionally what a player wants to do is establish countertop and to control the game. So it's really interesting to see what Brian actually chooses to have his goal for the game be. If it's not to establish countertop, you know, he's going to have to go beat down to win quickly. It's just going to change how he values everything here. Mm -hmm. he's not, he can't take a traditional approach. Right. Time simply won't allow him to do that. He has to cast his spells into counter magic. You know, there's not dazes in this matchup, but it's just, you know, it's pedal to the metal. He doesn't have a choice. Yeah, that's force of will. I'll fight you back. I'll force the will back. Maybe in a circumstance where he wouldn't force the will back, but he has to because he has to try to get this game over with. I wouldn't be surprised if I see something crazy like bounce your click. click. <laughs> yeah, attack with my V click. Let's get this party started. I got to kill you. There, there you go. There you go. All right. Let's go. It's 15. Yeah. He doesn't have a choice. He's got to get the ball rolling. One card remains in his hand. We do see just lands a counterbalance and beak like in Chi Hoi Yim's hand. And Brian Brunduin may be able to take this game quickly. He, he's ahead. We'll see if he can hang on to it. There's a counterbalance. We're going to get this established. That's a flooded strand. So now countertop assembled for Yim. So traditionally, it's both players doing what they want to be doing. BBD has a Jace and he's beating down and tapping out for things. Yim, he has his countertop assembled. And Brian going to brainstorm with Jay Sisko around since it's not underneath any pressure. He's going to attack here for three. Yim is going to, we think, spin a top. Maybe just take the damage. Look like he's just going to take the damage and go to 12. And Brian looks like he's going to pass the turn back. I imagine he was brainstorming there for a fifth land to suit up a sword. You know, attempt to hit all of that good stuff. Didn't find the land. Did find a force one, I believe, a blue card, however. So he's okay right now as Yim is going to spin top, untap, take a draw. This is a mountain. Yeah, Yim's going to max value this fetch line. He doesn't have action right now, and he needs, so he needs to find it. He needs to get all the value he can out of his lands. However, this is the matchup, you know, this is still where Yim wanted to be in the matchup, mm -hmm. remember. No. He has countertop going, so despite the fact that Jace draws cards and Jabran has a lot of card draw, countertop eventually will generate more card advantage than anything that BBD is doing. 
So Yim is going to take a look at the hand. You've got Force of Open Dealing clicking the spell purse. Among Brian's lands, you saw him slide the Caracas over to the left there underneath the planes because he can bounce the Vendillion click that Yim has in the play to keep this damage <laughs> race going. So he's going to put a card to the bottom. Brian's going to draw a card. He says, eh, let's get that out of the way if you don't mind. I want to keep this damage race going. Three more. So <laughs> down to nine. And now I want to see if he's going to try to deploy the sword or not. He says, I'm going to start with a Brainstorm. So here's a Batter Skull. There's a Wear Tear along with a Stone Forge Mystic. Two cards you're going to have to go back here. Are they the two right ones? Who knows? Don't know if he has enough time to try to figure that out. All he has to do is try to get his opponent from 9 to 0 right now. What I love about this approach is if they had 40 minutes to play the game, I, I can't imagine Brian would be playing it this way. I mean, no. But, but, it, but it looks like it's working. That's the best part. Wear and Tear has been fused right now, targeting Counterbalance and Sensei's Divine Top. What's the converted mana cost on that? It combines the two. That's oh, a wow. click. Well, that's a three. Not bad. Not, Not bad, bad at for all. him. So Yim, looking at a V-click in his hand along with a Scalding Tarn. He's going to spin top right now in his upkeep. Look at that V-click that just did save his two permanents, a Jace as well as a land in, in Volcanic Island. Yeah, and remember, this is actually where Yim wants to be in the matchup too. He, it's a little more pressure, I think, than he would originally want, but he's only, you know, one swords to plowshares away from, from really stabilizing the board. And you had to imagine that, Brian, given how much time was left after game one was finished, that, okay, my opponent is going to take an aggressive approach. My job is to not die. That's yes. it. That's the entire game plan here. You see Brian's going to sacrifice Aaron Mesa, spin the top, take a look at the top three. You see an island among the cards he's looking at. I think there's a Jace there as well. Quickly spinning top as he does need to right now. He'll untap. He will take a draw. It's an island. He's got a Stoneforge Mystic in the hand. He's going to start by attacking. Yim is going to play a Vendillion Click yet again. <laughs> just going to keep bouncing it. This is the best part. All Brian's right. He's going to show a hand. It's a Spell Pierce, a V-Click of his own, and now a Stoneforge Mystic. Maybe Yim will take one. Maybe he won't. But I got a feeling that Caracas is going to turn sideways in just a moment. After Brian does take a draw, Caracas is going to bounce that thing out of the way. Three more damage. Yes, Yim down to six. Brian going to brainstorm. Finds a Jace, a brainstorm, and a plane. I love how even while playing faster, Brian manages to make some next level plays here. Normally, you'd want to brainstorm pre-combat in case you find a counter spell. But if you're anticipating that Yim's going to flash in V-click and make you draw a card, then by waiting for the post-combat brainstorm, Brian got to see an extra card that turn. Smart. Very smart as he does try to finish off this game in time. Yim. Looking at some cards here from Sensei's Divining Top. He's going to untap. He will take a draw. That's a Scalding Tarn. He's going to reorganize some mana here. He's getting into range to be able to deploy Vendillion Click twice in a turn as Brian's going to spin top. He's going to leave those cards there. He's going to untap very quickly and take a draw. It's a Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah, so now she, Yim can play two Vendillion Clicks. He's going to get that trade. So BBD is going to need something else. He's going to cast a Stoneforge Mystic, maybe get some equipment to suit up his own Vendillion Click with. Does he have the pro blue? Does he have a fire ice in his sideboard? What is his package? Uh, he's got the one batter skull in the main, the one batter skull on the board. No uh, sort of feast and famine is the sword that he does have. No fire and ice as he's going to shuffle his deck here after getting a batter skull presented over to Yim in just a moment here as we're going to work our way. It's under four minutes left in the round. In comes Vendillion Click. Makes you wonder if Brian's ready to just trade here. He's going to drop his hand on the table emphatically, show you a V click, a brainstorm, a Jace, a spell pierce, and that batter skull he just searched up. I, Yim looks like he's going to take a card. He says, sure, I'll take a batter skull. That works for me. Just trying to stay alive. Remember, with enough time, Yim's countertop should take care of everything that's going on here. Yim's going to go down to three. Now, the card that Brian drew off of that Vendillion click was a copy of Pyroblast. So he can actually bounce Vendillion click and then counter it back on the way down. So Vendillion Click Aggro is doing a beautiful job here. Yim's going to search out some lands. He may actually just go for the Vendillion click again right now. As he does search out a Tundra and an island with the two fetch lands. And I believe that's going to put him down to one. There's a chance of that. Here's a Brainstorm. Yeah, he's going to cast this. Now, one thing about the Pyroblast that's actually in play, and this is a beautiful play by Brian, with the activation of top on the stack, Pyroblast your Vendillion click. You don't have one top of your deck, do you? No, you no, don't. We didn't. It's yeah, an, island. an island. So there that goes. Now top goes on top of the deck. Brainstorm is going to get countered. Yep, so that, the island's going to go to the grip. Brainstorm gets countered. Three damage is kind of going to cross. I believe that's going to leave Yim at exactly one, as you did mention. He's going to draw top, put it into play. Brian going to spell pierce that because, sure, make you pay some more. Why not? See if he has it. He has okay. another top. Gets it for free. Now he he's going to spin. What's he looking for? Terminus, probably? A removal spell of any sort. Remember, fetch lands don't even do it. He does. He 
can't crack yeah, one. Yeah, can't crack. There's Jace's. Jace isn't good either, because he's at one, and there's a Stoneforge and a Beast Stone, play. <laughs> Stoneforge will beat him down. And he's going to concede the All game. Right. BBT is going to win game number two. And I don't know if we're going to be able to play a third one. They're certainly going to try, as they've got about two minutes left here. This is ridiculous. I mean, if you're a BBD fan, there's hope. He maybe can win this. If you are a Reed Duke fan, this greatly increases his chances of being able to make it into the top mm -hmm. eight. I think going into this round, it was a, it looked like Reed was going to win and get ninth. Now it is going to be a tiebreaker battle between Chi Hoi Yim and Reed Duke for that eighth place spot. Oh, these guys are slugging it out. and It is an absolute blast to watch here. The remaining round, 16 of 16 of our Invitational here. Season 2, StarCityGames.com Open Series. Cedric Phillips, Matthias Hunt, and of course, Patrick Sullivan, along with Andrew Shrout and Nick Miller on the sideboard, bringing you coverage all weekend long. We've got some players locked for top eight. One of these guys is going to make it. We're going to find out who in just a moment as both players do shuffle up and get ready for game number three. Don't know how many turns we're going to get to see here. It may be a draw, which is okay for him and not great for BBD. Yeah, so we'll see here. I mean, and I don't, I don't even know if they're going to get to turn. Turn one is going to be extra turns here. So this, it's a formality. But I, I don't believe either player can, has a chance to win here. Well, you got to try. Sure. That's all I can say is you got to try. Too much on the line to not try. It might be short. Who knows? Who cares? It's your last round of the tournament. You got to try. Both players are going to lay out seven. I feel like both players will keep <laughs> literally anything right now. Well, if they could. Here's the thing: if you're gonna, if you have to mull to six, you probably just like. Well, the, the, then you're, you're, you, you, anyone can take a draw by mulliganing. Yeah. Brian gonna play a top pass to turn back over to Yim. Yim is gonna draw, play a tundra, pass the turn back. Brian gonna draw. He saw force of will. He's gonna try to play stone forge. You know that. He's gonna go for that. There's a counter spell. He's got a force of will. There's blue card. Gets you a brainstorm. <laughs> Real aggressive. Time to go searching. He'll pass the turn over to Yim. You gotta imagine it's a batter's call. Could be sort of feast and famine, however. He's going to go with the batter skull. Yim draws a Caracas for the turn. He's got a Vendillion click in his hand to go with it. May get that batter skull if Brian tries to end step it. He has the play where he gets to V click it. Well, there's the planes. Pass the turn. Brian going to untap. He's going to take a draw. He got no time to spin top to make sure it's a good draw. So let's just play a Caracas. Pass the turn back. That was turn zero. Yep. And you see a slow down. Yep. He's going to play a Caracas. Brian says, I'm going to activate this right here. Vendillion Cliff's going to take that away, or will it, as a Pyroblast will take care of that. How about a Force of Will to take care of the Pyroblast? So that's going to put the Batter Skull to the bottom of the deck. Stoneforge puts nothing into play. Correct. Unless Brian had drawn an equipment there. That's the only way that would have worked out. Oh, that's such justice when that happens. <laughs> we are on turn number two right now. As you can see, the die at the top of the screen. Brian going to spin the top. He'll slow down a little bit here. Draws a copy of Stone Forge Mystic. He's going to attack here for one. Offer up the trade of uh. Vendillion. Absolutely not. <laughs> Looks like it may be turn number three. We'll, we'll make sure we know exactly what turn this is right now for you guys so it's not too confusing. Chances are it's going to end up in a draw anyway as Brian does search up the batter skull, but we will make sure that the turns are correct for everybody at home as Jim is going to take turn number four. So it looks like we are good to go. Draws a copy of Wear and Tear. No red mana for Yim right now. With Brian has a Batter Skull, two cards in his hand. Yim going to attack here, 4-3. Looks like he has a pair of Blasts and a Wear Tear. Were this not turn five, this would be a pretty tough spot for Yim. Once again, though, you can't really look at games that way because were this not turn five, you know, Yim probably would have played real different. There's also a chance players would have mulliganed. Yeah. You know, kept different hands. Who knows how it would actually unfold given infinite time as Brian is going to spin top. It's turn number five. He'll draw. You see a force in the counter spell along with the batter skull to top in play. They probably wouldn't have snapped force of willed all of each other's spells. Yeah, of course. It's a different situation. And it looks like it's just going to, you know, damage is going to be dealt here. Brian will probably show his hand. Chi Hoy will do the same. But what is going to end up here is that chances are it'll probably be a draw. There may be a chance of a concession, but with Chihoy, you know, has the ability to make top eight, it looks like it's going to be a draw. So that will be the shoulder shrugging of the conversation. And when we do have a result for you guys, there's a shake of the hand. We'll certainly relay it over to you. But entertaining stuff between either player, between both players, excuse me, nonetheless. And it is officially a draw here. And for Yim, he probably makes it in the top eight. And for Brian, you can see the disappointment on his face. This is another one that has gotten away from him here. He started this tournament 9-0-1. Much like in the season one invitational in Columbus, 10-0. 
and it looks it doesn't look like he's, he's going to be able to convert either one into a top eight. It's got to yeah. be tough to take. We'll, we'll see what happens here. And we'll let you know when we know about it. But right now, it's...